Hello, lovelies! Welcome back for episode three of The Window Cat. Okay, so we left you last time. Um, we should have finished through the end of round 27. And now on the pattern, it says at this point, you should have 44 stitches remaining. Um, that's where I am on the pattern. So my cat, whoop, there goes my stitch marker. So we've got the head shaped and we're ready to begin making the ears. So if I smush this down, you can see the outline of my cat starting to take shape. So and yours should look something like this, or at least the shape should be the same. I know the colors will be different, but the shape should be pretty similar. Um, and I have a pile of stuff. So here's my beginning of round stitch marker, which fell off because I'm at the beginning of the round. I have a little bit of waste yarn for sliding stitches onto my tapestry needle and some scissors. And now we are ready to begin the next instruction. So she says, what we're gonna do is slip the first seven stitches of our round onto our DPN. We are doing magic loop. So we're just gonna slip these first seven stitches onto our right hand needle. So one, two, three. Notice I am slipping as if to purl. In knitting, you always slip as if to purl unless your pattern tells you otherwise. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the reason for that is because when you slip as if to knit, you actually twist your stitch. When you slip as if to purl, you're just sliding it from the point of one needle onto the point of the other needle. All right, so this is our first seven stitches. And now what we are doing is we're gonna thread our needle with some waist yarn. I've got my needle, my waist yarn. And okay, we are now going to slip the next 30 stitches onto our piece of waste yarn. And again, we're gonna slide them on tip to tip as if to purl. So that's two. Just pulling my needles out of the way so the stitches don't fall off. So here's three, four, five, six. Okay, and then that was 26. We need four more because then there should be seven left on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four. Perfect. Okay. Zhuzh our needle back through here. Okay, so now we've got 30 stitches on a piece of waist yarn. And those can just hang out. Uh, it looks like we will come back to those later. So notice on my waist yarn, I have very long tails. Uh, that's so I can have all of these stitches hanging out. I don't have to worry about them slipping off and they're just gonna be fine all on their own. Okay, so now we have 14 stitches remaining on two DPNs. Well, ours is on one half of our needle. So we're gonna have to break this up because we're supposed to be going in the round in a circle. Uh, so I have three, six, nine, twelve. Yes, we have fourteen. And we're let's pull our cable through here. I just picked an arbitrary spot. Uh, oh, and it looks like maybe that's not what I want to do. So our working yarn is here. That means I want the tip of my needle over here. We're gonna have to do some zhuzhing around because our tips are now in a funky place. So I'm gonna slide the last seven stitches 
actually, I'm going to slide the last, yeah, the last seven stitches onto the other half of my needle. And I'm going to pull, I'm going to take my stitch marker and I want to mark where my beginning of round is. So I am clipping it to the piece of knitting as opposed to on the needle itself. And she says for rounds one through three, we're gonna knit all of the stitches. So do you see how I have this set up? Okay. So now we're gonna, all we're gonna do is knit for three rounds. There's one. And then again, getting to the end of this needle, we have this huge gap here, but we don't want that gap to stay. So when we are knitting the next stitch, we want to pull our working yarn nice and snug. So I've got my needles in position, wrapping my yarn around drag it through the gutter off the cliff and I want to pull snugly on that first stitch so I don't have a crazy huge gaping gap and we'll knit to the end of this half of the needle I'm going to do in the ears are little so, of course, some of this is going to feel a little bit fiddly, especially now we've got all these strands hanging out. Um, so, if you're doing stripes like I am, I think what I want to do is I'm going to make my... Now, I have to think about, do I want to keep striping to the tips of the ears, or am I gonna make these all one color? And I think what I wanna do is I'm just gonna make them one color. So I'm gonna cut my contrasting piece of yarn here. And my window cat will have blue ears. Also the nice thing about the creative decision that just made is uh, remove some of the extra strands of yarn from hanging out and getting in our way. This is awfully long. Let's trim this too. Okay, tidied up a little bit. That's better. Tuck those out of the way. And so that was round one. Uh, we have two more rounds to go. Boy, that's tight. Okay. Okay, so now we are back at the beginning of our round. And it looks like we have some decreases, slip, slip, knits, knit two together. So we know how to take care of that. Um, so the first thing we have, boy, it is getting fiddly. Okay. So we're going to start off with a slip, slip, knit, and then knit three, and then knit two together, and then slip, slip, knit, and then knit three, and then knit two together. Okay, so here we go with our slip slip knit. So we're slip, and remember on our slip slip knits, we slip as if to knit, insert our needle in the front of both slipped stitches, and knit those two things together. And then we have one, two, three, and 
knit two together. Okay, and turn. And move these scissors out of the way. Okay, and now we're going to do, whoops, our, so slip, slip, and knit. And now we're going to knit three. So here's one, two, three, and knit two stitches together. Uh, let's take a look here. So we did our first round of increases and then there's two rounds where you knit all the stitches and then we're going to do the increases again, or sorry, the increases, the decreases again. And instead of knitting three between the decreases, we're going to knit one and then one more round of knitting all the stitches. And then we're going to cut the yarn, thread it through our tapestry needle, remove our knitting needles, thread through the remaining line of stitches, pull tight. So then we're gonna finish off our ears. So let's zip through this and then we'll pick up again right as we're finishing through the ears. Okay, so let's do this. So that was our last round of decreases. So now we're gonna knit plain for two rounds should go relatively quickly because you don't have that many stitches left anymore. And remember, we're going to do this on the other ear as well. Both of the little kitty ears are getting treated the same. This is going to look cute with blue ears. I'm second guessing myself. I think little blue ears and a little blue top can be fine. Okay, so now we're doing our last round of decreases for ear number one. And we're going to slip, slip, knit one more time. So slip, slip, and whoa. knit. Okay, and knit one. And now we're going to knit two together. Flip our cat around. Pulling the knitting needle through, back through the stitches. And we're gonna do that again on this side of the ear. We've got our slip, slip. And knit. And then we have knit one. And our knit two together. Look at that, it's a little pointy cat ear. Okay, so now we're gonna knit all stitches. So I have six stitches. You should also have six stitches left. So we are gonna knit all these stitches and then cut our yarn and finish off our ears. Or at least this ear. <laughs> okay. Here is one. The nice thing about making this cat is we don't really have to sew in ends since we're gonna stuff the cat. So your ends are just gonna end up going into the side of this kitty. Now if you're gonna embroider the face on, uh, you have two options. You can sew your face on before you stuff the cat after we're done with the ears, or you can sew the face onto it last after you stuff everything. 
up to you which way you want to go with that. I think it's probably fine either way. Might be easier to sew this stuff on before you put the polyfill into the body of your cat. Um, I don't know that it makes a huge difference. Might be a little bit easier to embroider the face and then finish off the cat rather than finish off the cat and then embroider the face. So I don't need my stitch marker anymore. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the yarn, give myself a nice tail. And where did I put my tapestry needle? Ah, here it is. And I'm going to thread my tapestry needle. And I'm gonna thread the remaining stitches onto, onto here. Here's one, two, three. Pull that through. And and pull this needle out. The so one, two, three. So just grab all the stitches. So now I have six stitches and the top of my ear looks like this. And I'm just gonna pull that tight. And look, it's an ear. Huzzah, it's a little cat ear. Okay. And now I'm gonna pull this down through the center of our ear. So see that there's a teeny tiny ring of stitches up here. I'm gonna put my thumb inside and insert the tip of my needle into the middle of those stitches. And then I'm gonna pull the yarn through nice and tight, keep it pointy. And that's it, that's all there is to it. Okay, so that's ear number one. And we don't even have to sew in our ends because this cat head is gonna be full of stuffing and no one will ever, ever see those ends. And they can just stay there just like that. Okay, so look, so here's my cat. He's got one ear. Now we're going to pick up stitches for the, for the next ear. So we're going to place the next eight stitches from the scrap yarn at the front of the head onto a DPN. Place the last eight stitches from the scrap yarn at the back of the head onto a second DPN. And with the Kitchener stitch, we're going to graft these 16 stitches together to form the area between the ears. Okay, so here we go. Here's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so here's our eight stitches. I'm gonna pull out the, slide this onto the cable. It's easier to pull out the waist yarn when your stitches are on the cable rather than pulling out the waist yarn when the stitches are on the shaft of your needle. Pull out the waist yarn here. So we're going to eventually, we're going to be grafting the top of the cat head and then making this other ear over here. And some of you have done the Kitchener stitch before. Some of you have not. Uh, Kitchener stitch some, makes some people nervous. It's really nothing to be nervous about. I always like to sing the directions to myself when I do it so I don't forget where I am. So then here we need eight stitches on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're gonna pull. Okay. So 
So now I have eight stitches on part of the needle facing me. And I have eight stitches on part of the needle facing away from me. And I want to turn my work around so both the needle tips are pointing to the right. And then I'm going to grab some of this blue yarn again with my tapestry needle. And when you begin the Kitchener stitch, the Kitchener is really a form of invisible grafting. So it's to make the top of the head have an invisible seam is what we're doing. So we're gonna start in the front where we put our tapestry needle, we're gonna insert it into the first stitch on the front needle. The needle closest to your body will be our front needle. The knitting needle farther away from our body will be the back needle. And we're going to end up sewing off these stitches one by one, alternating from front to back, front to back, front to back, all the way down to the end. To start off, we're going to slip the needle in as if to purl. Also, don't need this whole big thing of yarn. That's probably plenty. Now we're going to insert our tapestry needle into the first stitch on the back knitting needle as if to knit. So we did purl, knit. Now we're going to bring our tapestry needle to the front stitch again. And we're going to insert this as if, insert this as if to knit because it goes knit off purl, purl off knit. So insert our tapestry needle as if to knit, slide the front stitch off. Oops. And we're gonna pull this through. Then we insert our needle as if to purl and we're gonna leave the second stitch on. And you wanna pull your yarn so it is snug, but not overly tight. Now we're going to insert our tapestry needle into the first stitch on the back as if to purl. And we're gonna slide that first stitch off of the back needle. This is purl off, and now pull the yarn through. And now we're going to go into the second stitch as if to knit and leave it on. Okay, now we're back to the front needle. So we're going to knit the stitch on the end off of the needle in the front. And then into the next stitch, we're gonna purl and leave it on. Now on the back needle, go into the first stitch as if to purl and take it off. Go into the following stitch as if to knit and leave it on. Now we're going to go into the first stitch on our front needle and see I'm sort of adjusting the length of the front and back needles so the stitches that I'm not working on do not slide off the end by mistake. So we're going to insert our tapestry needle as if to knit and slide the first stitch off. Pull it a little snug and see it's making this invisible seam. Insert our needle into the second stitch as if to purl and we're going to leave it on. Get our tail out of the way. Now we're going to move to the back needle. We're going to go into the first stitch as if to purl and take it off. Now 
And then the front, we're gonna knit and slide it off. And then purl and leave it on. And then in the back, we're gonna purl and slide it off. And then we're gonna knit and leave it on. And then we're gonna knit off the front. Slide our needle out, our knitting needle out. Pull that snug. And then we're gonna purl off a stitch in the back. Pull that snug. And look, stick my hand in there so you can see it. Look at that, huzzah, invisible. It's like magic, just did magic. This is what um, people use on the toes of, of socks. And then you'll notice you might have like a little hole here like I do. So we can take this strand and we can sew that shut with our tapestry needle. Okay, finishing work is always a little bit fiddly and a lot of people dislike doing it. But the nice thing is, is that once you're done, then it looks awesome. And if you spend a little bit of time and are patient with yourself while you are finishing up your knitted pieces, you know, these extra fine touches at the end, you know, they make a difference. You spend so much time making the piece, why not spend a few extra minutes with your finishing so it too looks really nice. Let's shove this down. Yeah, let's shove this down in here. Okay. Now we've got one ear down and the top of the head is complete. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to arrange these 14 live stitches onto our knitting needle and we are going to complete ear number two the same way that we did ear number one. Okay, so now we're ready to pick up stitches for ear number two and I want to pick up the live stitches in the same way that we picked up the live stitches to close the seam across the top of the head when we did our Kitchener stitch. I'm gonna pull the cable through. So here's three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> How often does that happen? You don't count and you end up with the perfect number. All right, so now I've got the first seven stitches are on my knitting needle and I'm gonna pull out the waist yarn. So it looks like our beginning and end of round will be here on the inside of the ear, which is fine. And according to her directions, that's how that is supposed to be. Stitch number one is supposed to be on the inside of the ear, I suppose, as opposed to the outside of the ear. Come on. Okay. Got our three, six, seven. Good, we didn't drop any stitches. Now I have my stitches on the cable. Easy to pull out my waist yarn. Boom. Okay, she says, the first stitch should be the innermost stitch on the right side of the ear. And so it is right here. So this is gonna be our stitch number one. And I'm going to, just so I don't forget, because you know sometimes you're knitting along and you're on autopilot and you just kind of forget where you are. Happens to everyone. I am going to clip my stitch marker just here on the inside. Easy to see a stitch marker because it's this chunky plastic thing. Okay. And we're going to need some working yarn. And 
I'm going to repeat all of the rounds that we did on ear number one. So we're going to knit all the stitches for three rounds and then we're going to do our first round of decreases and then do a plain round and then do another round of decreases, do a plain round, and then we'll finish off ear number two in the same way we did ear number one. To get started with my new yarn, all I do is you've seen I've pulled my needle around, so I've my twisty cable around, inserted it as if to knit into the very first stitch. I'm gonna leave myself a little tail. All I do is make a loop and I just go ahead and start knitting with the yarn. Okay, leave our tail hang. Pull on my working yarn. And now I'm just gonna knit around and follow the directions in the same way that we did ear number one. And then we will come back when it, we are ready to pick up stitches for the base of our cats. Okay, so now that you finished ear number two and I sewed up the hole at the base of the ear and I just kind of did a winging it sort of sewing up and I suggest you do the same. Nobody's gonna look that closely at your window cat. And if they do, and they say something bad about your window cat, you don't have to be friends with them anymore. That's okay. <laughs> All right, so now the magic stuffing part. Look, it looks like a cat. Um, so now we're gonna stuff the ears and the head and the top half of the body. All right, so we've got our cat half stuffed. So his head and his ears are stuffed. And half of our, well, a little more than half of our body is stuffed. And I wanted to show you how to pick up the stitches around the base before I leave you and see you next time. Uh, on, in our next video, we're gonna make paws and a tail and we'll do the finishing touches on the face. Okay, so we need to pick up 75 stitches from the cast on edge. So I have my marker here for our beginning and end of round. So all you have to do, um, you can pull the marker out and stick in your needle. Let's grab our working yarn and make a loop, pull it through. And then along the base, Let's see if we can get in here. It's a little fuzzy, but you can see sort of the sideways V's for your cast on edge. And all I'm doing is inserting my needle as if to knit. So that's two, three, four, and that's all there is to it. You just sort of pick up stitches as you go around. That's it, and then when we come back, we'll just knit into the, on the round two, you'll just knit into those stitches that we picked up. That's all there is to it, to picking up stitches along our cast on edge. So I will see you next time. Happy knitting.